What's up guys, Tony here with High Tech Check, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Xiaomi 70 MAI dash cam. Now, I got this off of banggood.com. I will be putting a link in the description in case you guys want to check out all the electronics that they sell there. They're international, uh, US, everything you can imagine they sell there. So if you want, uh, take a look at that link in the description below. This one's pretty cool. It's got a, a Sony IMX323 sensor. It records in 1080p at 30 frames per second. It has an f2.2 aperture. It has a 130 degree viewing angle. The processor is an MSC 8328P. It can take a 8 gig to 64 gig class 10 or above uh, micro SD card. It also works off of Wi-Fi, uh, BGN, only the 2.4, no 5 gigahertz. The working temperature is negative 20 Celsius to negative 60 Celsius. That's 68 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. It also has a built-in 240 mAh battery. The working voltage is 5 volts, 1.5 amps. It works with Android and Apple. It has a built-in 128 megabyte flash, and it records video, audio, and can take pictures. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what you get inside. Okay, so here's your manual. Then this right here, is a little sticky plastic tab and basically what you do is you put this up on your windshield first then you mount the dash cam over this so if you need to take the dash cam off it's definitely a lot easier to remove this than it would be from just sticking this directly onto your windshield now you can probably also use some velcro if you have that but th this seems to work pretty well i've used this on some other uh, applications that I've had in my car and it just makes it like I said it makes it easier to take off your windshield if you need to so here we have our dash cam put that aside for a second here is your power cable it's got the micro USB to regular USB and you get a little box Let's see what's in here and they give you a little power adapter, which is pretty nice. Okay, so let's take a look at the camera here. So here you have your little mount. It can move. You tighten it up with this right here. Assuming that's like a little power button. Yep. Okay, we'll do that in just a second. Here you get your reset button, your power plug, and where you stick your little micro SD card. So it does have a little weight to it. Not overly heavy, not overly light. Let's go ahead and set this up with the phone. Okay guys, so here I have the dash cam uh, set up with my power cable to my wall adapter. I do have an SD card in here. It's a 64 gigabyte SD card, uh, class 10. It has to be at least a class 10 or it will not work with the dash cam. And if you put it in there and it's not a class 10, the, the dash cam is gonna let you know that it won't be able to work with it. So it is on right now. We're gonna turn it off. So what you're gonna to wanna to do first is get your manual and you're gonna go ahead and uh, scan this QR code and this will get you to the app or you can just go to the app store I'll show you and then if you have any questions um, here's the user guide you're gonna want to use this QR code for the user guide because it tells you everything you're gonna to need to know on how to uh, operate the camera I'm just gonna go, go ahead and do like a quick overview here so it is off right now um, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and download the app on the App Store. So here's the Google Play. I'm using my OnePlus 6T Android. So you go into Google Play. You're going to search for the 70MAI dash cam. It's the very first one. You're going to go ahead and install that. While that's waiting, you can go ahead and turn on your dash cam. Just hit the button once. Okay, it is on right now. That breathing green light means that the Wi-Fi hotspot is active and we can go ahead and use our app to view the videos and such on here. If it's solid green, that means it's just in normal recording mode and you will not be able to connect to the app. 
Okay, our app is installed. We're gonna go ahead and open it up. You're gonna go ahead and create an account and log in. Once you're logged in, you're gonna go ahead and add a device. It's the 70MAI Smart Dash Cam. It's gonna tell you a little bit about it. Click Next, Allow. So now we're gonna go ahead and go into our Wi-Fi settings because we need to connect to the dash cam. Turn your Wi-Fi on. It's the very first one. You're going to click on it and put in the, the password. It's 12345678. So we're connected to that. We're going to go back to our app. We're going to go ahead and hit connect. Please click the power key to authorize. Okay, go ahead and hit that power key. Connected successfully. Open dash cam. Uh, you cannot use the voice activation or the power button settings while you're in the app. That's fine. Here's going to show you a little uh, preview of what the dash cam sees. Okay. So there's a little preview there. You can go ahead and take a picture. Hit allow. Try that again. Taking photo. Okay. So now we're going to go into our album. It's going to show you where your... Uh, videos and photos are. So here we have that photo we just took. You can download download or delete it to your gallery. Okay. You can also do the same you can also do the same thing with videos. You go into your album, you can delete and download that video to your phone. Now the regular uh, videos are about a minute long. And if you manually start a video recording, it adds 30 seconds onto that minute, so a minute 30. So we'll go ahead and go into device settings. Power on Wi-Fi settings. So when you turn on the dash cam, it automatically uh, hooks up the Wi-Fi hotspot so you can go ahead and use the app, but you can turn that on or off. Uh, so you can set your Wi-Fi password, collision sensitivity. If something uh, jars the, you know, your car or something like that, it'll automatically or record an event video. Uh, you can... Recording event video. No. <laughs> See, it, it used my voice to manually start the recording. Um, sound recording is on, which records, you know, sound. Uh, speaker volume is on large. You can do large, medium, and small. Large is the loudest. Image quality, excellent and normal uh, are good. The excellent setting, of course, is going to be better image quality, which will take up more space on your SD card. Um, on normal, or you know, on the normal video recording on the 64 SD card, should be about six hours of recording. Uh, your system time, adjust camera, which will let you just give you a preview, so you can adjust the camera how you like it. SD card state, you can format your SD card or see how much space you have left on it. Uh, you can restore default settings and about. Okay, so here's a little sample of some of the voice uh, commands. Take picture. Photo record video. Start recording event video. So this, what this does is records a minute 30 long video clip of, you know, pretty much anything that you want the camera to see. Record without sound. So now it's going to record video without any sound. You can also turn it back on. Record with sound. Sound recording was turned on. You can also turn off the Wi-Fi hotspot or turn it on. Turn off Wi-Fi. Closing hotspot. Turn on Wi-Fi. Opening hotspot. So there's just some examples of how the voice recording works. It's super convenient so you don't have to worry about you know, hitting the button or anything to change anything. So let's go ahead and hook this up in the car and see how it works. Okay, I already have the camera mounted on the windshield right underneath here. Uh, a couple things before we begin. The cable that plugs into here for the power for USB is about 12 feet long. So keep that in mind when you're trying to uh, route it throughout your car. I started from the top here and then ran it along my headboard here along the edge. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, and then two, 
the built-in battery is not to be used um, for you know driving and recording it's basically there in case the power shuts off or something um, from your cigarette lighter and it can use that little extra power to um, you know continue recording or whatever else it needs so it's not a wireless device it's only there as a backup just in case uh, you happen to lose power so before you uh, mount the the dash cam what you want to do is you find a central spot on your windshield then you're going to wipe it off with some alcohol is what i did dry it off really good once that's all dry you're going to take your uh, windshield sticker and then you're going to peel it off and then place the sticker directly in the middle what i did was i started with one end put one end down on the windshield and then just use a credit card or your finger and kind of push the rest of the, the sticker down to minim, minimize the uh, bubbles from the thing because you don't want any of those. So once that's down, uh, make sure it's straight because the dash cam needs to be uh, centered. You can't turn it or anything like that. It only moves up and down once it's mounted. So I was fortunate enough to have like a line um, on my dash so I just lined it up with that but what you can do is turn on the app um, don't take the sticker off and kind of put it where you're going to mount it and then kind of see where you need to turn it and then mark that and then you can uh, take the sticker off and push it up so once you do that um, what you're going to want to do is uh, all along the edges here what I did was when I stuck it up I used two fingers, pushed it up for like 30 seconds, and then after that, push um, push up hard on each corner to make sure that it's pretty much all st stuck to your windshield. And you can see that from the outside um, as far as the placement that needs to be uh, pushed down a little bit. Now, as far as my routing, as you can see, it's a a below along the um, headliner here. I went all the way over here down the the post uh, I opened the door and then it went down uh, the side of the door underneath where your feet go here and then as you can see the little wire plugs into my cigarette lighter there that was the most efficient route that I could find for my car you can you can do it yourself um, it's not super hard uh, you just need some plastic tools to make sure you don't you know scratch up your car or anything um, and if you don't feel confident in doing it yourself I'm sure that you know some car place would be able to do it for you not too much it took me probably about 30 minutes to route the cable wasn't hard at all definitely um, I think you can do it yourself so once you have that all mounted up uh, just turn on your app and you can you know rotate it up and down to kind of see uh, which way you need to place it. So that was it for the mounting. Let's go ahead and see how it works uh, out on the road. Okay, so as you saw, uh, I just started my car. Power went to the dash cam and it's already ready to record. So you don't have to worry about turning it on when you get in. Um, Unless your car supplies power to it all the time, then it won't do that. The only thing you have to worry about is turning it off when you turn your car off. Like my car, it doesn't supply the cigarette lighter power unless the car is either on or in accessory mode. So when you turn the car on, power goes to the unit, it automatically turns on for you. Take picture. Photo was saved. Record video. Start recording event video. So you can either start recording video manually by saying that, or if your car stops abruptly, like if you were to hit something and it jars the camera, um, it will start the event too. I would definitely recommend putting it on the highest sensitivity uh, to activate the recording because I'd rather have it go off than not. You can always change to lower if it triggers too much. Now as you can see here in this video, I triggered the camera to record an event by 
abruptly hitting my brakes and this is on the most sensitive that you can get it so it's really gonna uh, need a lot of you know g-force to trigger you hitting something or you hitting like a bump or something while you're you're going pretty quickly so that's it for the daytime video let's see what it looks like at night so here's a little sample of what it's like uh, around my neighborhood there are no lights no street lights in this area so that gives this gives you a good idea of what the camera is going to pick up and that's pretty much everything that's illuminated by your headlights so the more spread you can have on your headlights the more that the camera is going to get to see now here as you can see there are some street lights that gives the camera a lot better view of what's going on in the road and that's going to be the majority of the time and unless you live in a rural area if you're driving on the road in, you know, in the city, there's going to be more lights. You're definitely going to be able to see a lot more and it picks up uh, an image a lot better. But as you can see still, the image is still really good even while it's at night. Now, I've been a firefighter for about 11 years and I've definitely seen my fair share of auto accidents. and. A lot of the times you get on the scene and you're wondering, how did this accident even happen? Who's at fault? Well, with the dash cam, it definitely takes a lot of guesswork out of what actually happened. And a lot of the times it's your word against, you know, whoever hit you or, you know, vice versa. And unless it's a clear cut accident, it's your word against theirs. So again, with the dash cam, it definitely will help your case because you have video evidence and that's pretty irrefutable. Another nice thing is when it records an event, it records 30 seconds prior to when the event actually started. So you get a nice full video clip of what happened before and after the event. There are definitely a lot of bad drivers out there and I've definitely had a, my fair share of close calls too and that was prior to me having a dash cam. I wish I had a dash cam all this time and I definitely recommend if you have the chance to get one uh, definitely do because it it'll capture a whole bunch of things that you would have never been able to capture before and like i said if you happen to god forbid ever get into an accident it actually uh, will help your case against you know the person that hits you one other thing i wanted to share with you guys is i wanted to let you know that this is the eu version it's not the u.s version i do live in the u.s but at the time they did not have the u.s version in stock so instead i got the eu uh, it speaks English. Um, I have no problems connecting to the Wi-Fi, so if you have any reservations about buying the EU version, don't. Uh, just so you know that it does work. Now, I've had a chance to use this for about a week, and it has been working excellent. Uh, it's a small form factor. You don't need a screen on it like some of the other ones. It just kind of adds uh, bulk to it. This tucks neatly behind your uh, rear view mirror, so it doesn't obstruct any more uh, of your windshield. It's really easy to use. The app is uh, intuitive. It's very simple. It has the auto on off feature. So when I turn my car on, it always turns on. When I turn my car off, it always shuts off by itself. So that's one less thing you have to worry about. It's got clear sound and the image is 1080p as you saw. It was, I thought it was really good. You can see the license plates of cars. So there's definitely no problem there. It has voice activation, so you, while you're driving, if you want to, you know, activate the recording, you just use your voice. There's no fumbling around with buttons when you want to activate the video recording. And another cool thing is it sorts your videos by day, uh, a.m. and p.m., so it's very easy to find your videos. And within the week that I've been able to use it, I've had absolutely no problems with this. It turns on and off without fail every single time. It records video when I tell it to, and it's very convenient. You never have to take out the SD card from the camera to view your videos. You can use your camera uh, with the app. And after about a week and using it on you know, the looping mode and recording some video events, I still have eight gigs left on my 64 gigabyte SD card. So that kind of gives you an idea of how much the recording is used after about a week. The only thing that I kind of wish uh, that that would change or add a little bit was the sensitivity of the activation. Like I said, I did have it on the highest activation and it seemed to need a, a lot more uh, jarring to 
activate the video recording whereas you know i kind of like to see it a little bit more sensitive at least either have another uh, more sensitive option or make the highest sensitivity a little more sensitive but that's just my preference i would just like it to go off a little bit more easier just in case you know like if somebody hit your car or something like that that's definitely not a deal breaker it's just something that i'd kind of like to see change and i'm sure they could do that with a firmware update or uh, software or something like that. But other than that, I really like this dash cam. I definitely recommend uh, you guys, you know, check it out for yourself. Price point is definitely on point. I definitely recommend checking this out if you guys are looking for a dash cam. And I will be putting links in the description below in case you guys want to check it out yourself. If you guys enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little notification bell to let you know when I put out new videos. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Later.